are there some fundamental principles of gripping that you can speak to? And like, what the hell is gripping? Gripping is having the ability to hold your opponent in such a way where you have the ability to be offensive and also the ability to be defensive at the same given time. And it's a distinction because I can hold you in such a way where I might be able to feel offensive, but if you can take a purely defensive grip and then I can't be offensive, we are no longer gripping. We are holding each other. Right. Right. So like <laughs> that would be the act of being able to grip is to be in a situation where you have me and I have you and I can play both offense and defense at the same time where you can only play defense. So uh, Donahar talks about like jujitsu that way and uh, not that way, but maybe you can see if there's a distinction. So you have a set of weapons. The other person has a set of weapons. You want to sort of maximize the use of your weapons and shut down the set of weapons that they have. That, yeah. that they have. You see gripping the same way on the, on the feet. I do if we want to include body positioning with our gripping. All right. Okay. Because I can give you any grip you want and you still can't throw me. Because I can put myself in a position that nullifies your ability to use those grips in a successful way. And those, um, would you say the hips are critical to that or is it everything? Yep. Hips, shoulders, chin position, head position, you know, the That's angle you of lean. your foot. Yeah. Yeah, where you lean. <laughs> wow. Okay. And so, uh, and there's a bunch of places you can grip. Obviously, if people like kind of think of a jacket, like there's, a bunch of places you can grip that are interesting. So you can grip on the collar, you can grip on the sleeves, you can grip like at the elbow joint. Yep. And then you could do uh, those badass like Eastern European, yeah. Georgian, over the, back, over the back, over the opposite sides of the heads. Yeah. yeah. The Koreans that grab on one side around the head with their hands together. Yeah. There's something really nice about just those like, I mean, especially George just could throw in that hand, yeah, just over the person, and just it's you're not actually gripping a belt or anything, you're gripping just the entirety of like, as opposed to being all nice. And I'm gonna grab this part of the jacket, this part of the jacket, you're just like taking the whole fucking jacket it, and just launching somebody. For those people that can't picture judo, think about it in like if you understood like what a boxing match looks like and you thought about that as like traditional gripping, when you throw like a Russian grip over the back, that's more like a hockey fight. Like I'm just grabbing you and we're just gonna, we're gonna be throwing punches left and right. Cause when we have that grip, somebody has to get thrown. Yeah. There's no, there's no, we don't walk around with this grip. It's, it's go time once somebody throws it. To me as a, as a fan and sort of amateur practitioner, there's two styles of Olympic level judo. One is where you're trying not to get thrown. And the other is where you're trying to throw. Uh, more specifically, when you're trying not to get thrown, there's like the strategy that you're using gripping to nullify their offense and all those kinds of stuff. You're, you're being very clever and strategic and all that, you know, maybe using conditioning. And then there's people who just like step in the pocket and they don't almost don't care if they're getting thrown because they have the confidence that they're going to throw first. Yep. And those like there's a clear distinction between the people that do one or the other. And I think both can be done extremely successfully at the highest level. It's just like obviously you admire the people that step in the pocket and and I think when you look at the people who do judo the best, like if we want to talk about like the top 10% of the people who would compete at the games, they do both and they do both really well, but they favor one. Hmm. Because if you look at a player like uh, Lute Patiliani of Georgia, for example, there's a guy that stands in the pocket, but we can find numerous occasions where he's hustled some people for like a short period of time to get out of scenarios to elongate the match to make somebody tired. So you want both sides of the coin, but you better pick the one that, you know, 80% of your strategy is gonna be built around.